In today's tutorial, it is Crochet 101, right back from the very beginning. What do you need to do? What do you need to know in order to start to learn to crochet? We'll cover that right after this. So welcome back to the Crochet Crowd as well as Yarninspirations.com. I'm your host, Mikey. Today's tutorial is going all the way back to the very beginning. How to hold the hook, how to hold your yarn, how to just really get to those basic stitches in order to learn right from scratch. Now, I am the host of the Crochet Crowd, and I'm not very formal. So when I go to teach, just like in a live workshop, I have a lot of memory hooks that I like to use. I don't like to tell people that they're wrong when they're in the learning process because I truly believe within myself is that if you're holding the yarn or the hook slightly different from the way that I'm doing it, I don't say a word about it because you will find your own rhythm. Crochet is a very personal and therapeutic uh, form of a hobby that is so important to many of us. So within today's tutorial, let's go right back to the very beginning. Let's show you how to hold your hook, your yarn, and let's cover some of the basic stitches. And then you can come back to this channel and play all day long because we have hundreds of free tutorial projects just waiting for you to try. Now I use an ergonomic hook when I go to crochet and the ergonomics for me um, is a big difference versus one that has no rubberized or plastic uh, handle just like so. I'm just seeing if I have one off camera here. Um, I basically try not to have any of the regular hooks around just like this. I find with myself that it's harder for me to crochet with, with these because these are made for the machine to hold and not for you to hold. So the ergonomics are designed so that it works better in your hook. As you notice in my crochet tutorials that you'll notice that I rotate my hook a lot. So when I'm looking for a hook, I'm either looking for one, even if you're looking for this kind of model, is that it has to have a flat edge at some point because that's where your thumb is gonna rest and even with the ergonomics. So I don't get any hooks that are, don't have this flat edge because this flat edge helps you to keep your orientation on the hook at all times by looking for that in a hook. So what types of hooks should you buy? So for example, say you cannot get ergonomics, you don't wanna invest in that. You know, a good set of ergonomics, if you're gonna crochet a long time, don't be cheap about it because basically you know what pays the price? Your wrist, okay? So that is just something that you have to suck it up buttercup in order to do that. So say you could, don't wanna use these and you just wanna go for the cheap stuff that is in the stores, hey, there's nothing wrong with that, I'm cheap too. So, but you should look for a few things. There are different kinds of crochet hooks. This is a resin and then there's bamboo and then there's aluminum slash steel. So what would I recommend? Go for the bamboo. Bamboo, bamboo, bamboo is your best choice of these types of hooks if you're gonna just go a non-ergonomic non way. Then I would choose either resin if bamboo is not on the shelf and then aluminum and steel. The reason for it is that there, you have heat in your hand and when you're holding on to something, the heat transfers from your hand to the tool that you're holding on to. So bamboo, the heat transfers to the bamboo and holds on to your heat. Therefore, the same temperature is in the hook and your hand and this gives relief to your wrist. Now the second choice, if you don't have bamboo, go for the resin. This will hold on to the heat, not as well as bamboo, but it will work. And then steel and aluminum base, what happens is that the hand transfers the heat to the hook and disperses the, the heat away. So basically it's always trying to steal your heat from your hands and therefore you will have cramping in the long term. If you don't believe me, that's fine, uh, but that is something that I would recommend for a hook. So what kind of yarn should you look for when you're learning to crochet? Go for the cheap stuff. Go for the yarns that you're seeing in the mega retailers in order to make that decision. You don't know if you're gonna love crochet so why would you invest all this money into yarn? So what I'd recommend is look for the brands like this like a super value that are inexpensive in comparison. You get a lot of yarn on here so you get to practice a lot and therefore you don't have to mind wasting yarn in order to teach yourself to crochet. The worst thing you can do is buy expensive yarn. Realize that you don't love crochet as much as you thought and then basically you've just wasted a lot of money. So what I'd recommend just right off the start is get yourself a great hook. You can go for the resin and then just some inexpensive yarn and therefore you can really get started with crochet. In all the tutorials that we have available online I'm already holding my yarn and I'm already holding my hook. But this is how I go to do it. So if you have a better way of holding your hook and yarn then you're going to go for that. So let's review how to hold the hook first. Now there are two different ways of holding a hook and I hold it like it's a butter knife, just like so, 
Okay, it's in my hand. Do you see how kind of loosey-goosey it's in my hand? I don't have any tension here because basically the pressure of holding the hook is in my pointer finger and my thumb. That's why I love this flat edge when it comes to a hook. Okay, and so the back end comes to the end like so. Okay, so that's how I hold it. Now you'll have other people online and you may know that they hold it like it's a pencil and the hook is facing up. Now the reason for this is that back in the way back way back like going back long before our lifetimes is that this is the way it was to made to crochet because basically when the ladies crocheted like this it was very dainty looking for the wrist. It was all about the image of being a very upper class lady because in fact crochet at one point was only for the upper class. Well eventually some of those ladies actually taught their slaves and housekeepers and etc. how to crochet and over time crochet has evolved. Now if I was to tell you which way to start learning go for the butter knife. Okay, so long term suggestions that we've seen in studies is that when you hold your hook this way you will be susceptible to carpal tunnel in the long term right in your wrist because of the way that you're bending the wrist at this point. This is not a natural position versus holding it like a butter knife like so. See the difference of the way that the wrist is? Okay. So you have to do what works for you. So on the other hand we have the yarn. So I already hold my yarn already in projects but let me show you exactly where I'm holding the yarn in order for you to learn. So basically I want you to hold up your hand and we do this in live workshops. I have everybody hold up their hand and just like so. So you see all your fingers. Okay. So some people when they hold up their hand they see excessive gaps between their hands. They could have knuckles, arthritis and etc. So that's something that you're gonna have to think about when you're going to do it because not everybody's hands close uh, tight just like this. Okay, so that's something that you have to think about. So what I want you to do is that I want you to take the yarn and put it over top of your hand like so. Okay. So the yarn will be going over top of your hand and into your pointer finger and your thumb area. So now I want you to pick it up and just put it between your pinky and over top of three fingers just like this. Do you get that? At any point you can stop this video in order for you to see exactly where I'm moving everything. What I want you to do is that without any tension at all I want you to turn, leave everything in your hand and turn your hand around and pretend you're the queen of England but instead of doing a pinky in the air I want you to keep your pointer finger in the air and I want you to pinch like a flamenco dancer having her little tapping things. If this finger and this finger, so your driving finger and this finger are your finger that actually pinch your project as you're working and this one stays relatively high in the air or it can be bent whatever. And the reason for this is that the tension of this string right here is determined by this finger and also by this fingers back over here. So when I close these I can't pull this yarn and when I, it's a little bit loose here all I just need to do is raise up that finger here and then it's tense here. So basically the tension is here and here in your hand. So let's review that one more time. So you have the string, you put your hand in front of you, go down between the pinky, okay, and come across three fingers and then turn your hand around and pinch like a flamenco dancer. So I'm quickly going to do a slip knot and I'll show you how to do this in just a moment. Slip knots are really quite easy to make. But I want to, I want to show you something before we get started. Whenever you have a loop or a stitch or anything with crochet your hook cannot fall out of this hole unless it's turned in a certain direction. So here is the loop that you see here. The only way to get this out is to face it down towards the project or towards the knot. So let's put it in. So if the hook is facing towards me I can't get it out. It's up. I can't get it out backward. I can't get it out. But if I turn it upside down it comes out. And because it's forming a tear duct shape that tear duct is allowing you to get that hook out like so. Okay so if I turn it any other way it's not gonna fall out. So you have to make sure that when you are going in and out of your stitches this is where I talked about the flat area. We're gonna be rotating our hook because we're gonna come in, rotate and see how I go down and pull it out. 
through the bottom. So what you're going to always do is that this hook will always be turning direction of going up and down like so. Okay, so let's teach you how to do a slip knot. How do you get started? There's many ways of doing a slip knot. This is how I do it. So again, if you have a better way, that's up to you. So what I like to do is that I make myself a pointer finger, okay, just like so. Okay, and basically I always say in live workshops, I'm gossiping about somebody at the other side of the table that's sitting there. And basically I wanna keep my finger out and I wanna use my other hand to be able to operate to make the slip knot. So it's like almost like a gun. I hate to say that. That's why I always say it's gossiping. But I need to take the yarn. Okay, see where the strand is here or where the end, end is. I basically just take it and wrap it around my finger twice. Okay, let me show you that again. So I just, okay, I'm gossiping about the lady across the table and then I wrap it around my finger twice. So your straggler is right here. A straggler is, I call it as a loose end and I wanna take the rest of the three fingers and I wanna pinch this string here and the string leading to the yarn ball and pinch it. And I still have my loaded uh, gossip finger, okay? So I take the back one, this is the back of my hand, this is the forward. So I take the back string and I move it up over the forward but not off my finger and then I take the new back one and go up and over and that is my slip knot like so. Let me show you again. So really quickly, so I'm gossiping about the lady across the table. I'm wrapping my yarn twice and then I'm gonna grab everything. Back of my hand forward, I take the back one over top of the forward but not off and then I take the new back one up and over and that is my slip knot. And that's how you would do a slip knot to start. So going back to real time, I'm going to start a slip knot just like I've just shown you. Now, once you have your slip knot, I, you can either just go off like this completely, but what I always do is that when you see me do it in tutorials, once I have the slip knot made on my hand, I just slip the hook in, drop my hand out, my finger out, and just pull on the string leading to the yarn ball. Like so. Now you're not tying a boat. You're not tying down anything to the back of a truck or anything. You wanna have this so it's firm but not so the point that you see that these strings are stretching. So you're not gonna just reef on it so it looks like it's stretching like so because you'll never get your hook out of this puppy, okay? So you gotta make sure that when you're putting it onto your hook, you wanna secure it to the hook but you're not tightening to the hook that it's going to be a problem getting it out. So you should be able to take your fingers and your yarn and just being able to pull it out just like so. Okay, so if you cannot get it out right now and you've got, you've done that, you've done it too tight. So let's review on doing chaining. Now as I talked about with the loops, the only way to get the hook out is by turning it upside down. Okay, you can turn it any other direction. I don't care which way, way you do it because the only way it can come out is down. Okay, so what this is called, it's called yarn over. So what I want you to do, let's just review your hand again. So and basically let's put this yarn into your hand and get it ready. So you just put up your hand. I just naturally do it. I've been crocheting for 25 some odd years. So I just, just do naturally and then turn over my hand and then I use my flamenco clapping hands and I use that to hold the knot underneath. So I don't wanna grab this loop at all. I'm holding the knot just like you see. Now the big trick is is that you gotta make sure that this string is relatively um, has some tension in it. That's too loose for me just like you see. So all I'm just gonna do is take the string on the other side here and just pull it a little bit tighter. Okay? So basically I want you to put your finger in the air like so and there should be tension here. Okay, it's, it shouldn't be like a violin string but it's, it's got tension. It's not loosey goosey. You don't see it warping so it's got tension. So as I talked about you can only go down. So when you go to grab this yarn, okay, you don't go and over like that. You have to rowboat back. It's called yarn over but I call it rowboat. So I rowboat back and I turn my hook over, down and through. Okay, so now I let go of the project with my fingers and then I repinch the new knot that I just did, the new chain. So let's robo back, turn over and through. Okay, let me get a different angle. 
So pinch, back and through. Pinch, okay. So I'm always gonna just always, always just wrap like this. So come up underneath and wrap so it turns over like this. Don't ever go this way because do you see that it's not really gonna go, it's gonna go through the stitch but this is the correct way. So you're yarning over. So yarn over and through. Yarn over and through. And just keep practicing about this. Now your chain probably will not be as consistent with this when you're doing this for the very first time. So you just gotta keep playing around. Okay, this comes in time. So you'll notice that the string is just naturally coming in but newbie crocheters, this string is always really sloppy because they're not sure of this. So basically whenever I need tension, I'd close my hand naturally just on its own and then if I need more tension, I raise this string up even more. So some people crochet and when I crochet most of the time, it's like this, okay. Sometimes and it's up but I only go up when I need that tension. So if this was not tight enough, I would go up and then I have tension, okay. So you yarn over and through. So I say it's a rowboat and we come back and through. So continue to practice your chains and then when we come back, we'll start to do single crochet. So now we're going to play with single crochet and single crochet, there's many different types of crochet but I'm gonna go through the basics today because we have hundreds of tutorials just waiting for you to play and we do show all of these kind of steps along the way. So here is your chain. So in single crochet, if you were to single crochet across the chain, it'll always say go second chain from the hook. So what you have right now, here is one chain and here is the other. And what we've been doing here is that we turn it over and you will notice that the back appears to be like a spine of a reptile. So it's like called a back hump. That's where you need to go, okay. Some people go into um, into one of the front sides of it. You can do that but the back side provides a really nicer finish to it. So if you can get used to that at this point, you are far better, far better off. To single crochet, so we're gonna go second chain from the hook. So we count one, two, turn it over and there is the back hump right here. Once you get the back hump for the first time, the chain will stay turned over permanently so you don't need to turn it over again. You just immediately insert your hook in. So do you see that I'm using my thumb or I'm sorry, my pointer finger to stabilize that as I let the strand come through? Okay, so you use your fingers to be back stops when you need it and then move it out of the way when you don't. So we, we're gonna yarn over, so we're gonna yarn over coming around, okay, and pull through and we're gonna review this more slower too. So you'll have two loops on your hook, yarn over and pull through two. That is one completed single crochet. So now that I've done the first one, the rest of them, all the back humps are now upside down and ready for you. So you just go to the next one. So just in, see how I'm using this finger to stabilize that and then I move it out of the way. I pull through, so I yarn over and through and then yarn over, pull through two. That's a single crochet. Let's try it again. So again, okay, so I went in. See how I just naturally moved my finger and just pull through and pull through two. So let me show you in real time, okay. So basically the chaining is always the hardest part to start but then basically you just have to just be patient with it because it is the hardest row because basically there's nothing really much in your hands to hold. So you use these, your fingers and etc. anything you can in order to stabilize it. So again, let's just review more slowly. So in, okay, pull through, pull through two. So in, so if this chain was done way too tight, I would not be able to get my hook in there. So you gotta make sure that when you're chaining that you just are nice and loose about it so it's a lot easier for you to work with. There are some tips that for beginners that sometimes they use a larger hook to do the chain because they are tight and so when they go to start um, chaining like this, they use a regular size hook because it's smaller and probably easier to get into. So you're just going to single crochet yourself across your chain. When we come back, we're going to start doing half double crochet. So this is the next one up from in the steps of stitches. And basically when you come to the end, I'm on the last stitch. How do I know this is the last stitch? Well, years of practice for sure but this is the last back hump that you can see in the chain. 
So you see all of this stuff over here, that's not anything. Because the truth is, is that once you pull it tight, it's gone. So let's set, uh, start half double crochet next. So let's turn to work and do half double crochet. So half double crochet is a little bit taller than single crochet. So here's single and basically we are going to chain up two. So and the reason for it is that we're always going to come down into the stitch and then come back up to a certain height. In order to get to that height though we always have to chain at the start of a row. So whether it's a single crochet of chaining one, a double or half double crochet of chaining two, double crochet of chaining three and treble crochet of chaining four. Okay, that's why you see it in the instructions that way. So in half double crochet we're going to chain two. So just yarn over and pull through, yarn over, pull through. So that'll be the height of this whole entire line of where you're seeing it right underneath the hook. So to do a, uh, a half double crochet we're gonna go in and we're gonna wrap the hook first then go into a stitch. So on the top of the row you will see that there's two strings. Together they make up a stitch. You always, if you go into only one, so if you go into the one string that's closest to you, that is the front loop, okay. If you go into the only the back one, that's called the back loop. But in stitches you go into both, okay. So let me review that one more time. We're gonna yarn over and go into the first stitch and through, yarn over, okay. So yarn over, pull through and then in half double crochet you pull through all three. Okay, now a lot of baby projects are made with half double crochet. So that's why this stitch is relevant. Allows you to grow the project much taller but without having any gaps in the work that's really significant. So let's do the next one. So here's your next stitch ready for you. So yarn over, okay, insert into the stitch, yarn over, pull through. You have three loops on your hook, yarn over and pull through all three. So try again. So yarn over, into the stitch, pull through, pull through all three. Yarn over, into the stitch, pull through, pull through all three. So yarn over, into the stitch, pull through, pull through all three. Okay, yarn over and you're gonna do that completely down your line. So half double crochet has its purposes. It allows you to grow projects. A lot of um, half double crochet is a lot in a lot of clothing because then you don't have the excessive gaps in clothing that a normal typical double crochet which is probably the most popular stitch of them all. Okay, so just continue to go half double crochet all the way across. And how do you know when you're all the way across? I'll cover that in just a moment. I'm gonna get there. Okay, so how many do we have left? We have three. This back one over here, it's obvious because I'm a trained professional but in most newbie crocheters this one looks like it's missing. So therefore people stop one stitch early and what happens is that they have an afghan that grows up like a diamond because the fact is that they're uh, stopping too early. So you have to always make sure you're gonna go right to the very end. If you have to count your stitches for the first few times going across just to verify, so you see you only have one left, then you have to do that. For me that was one of the hardest parts of crochet is knowing when I was at the end of the line and it should be flat straight up just like the other side is, just like there. Let's uh, go on to double crochet next. So let's turn our work and go for double crochet. So this time it's a double crochet and this one will be slightly taller than half double crochet and definitely taller than then single crochet. So to start off with this one here is that when I started the half double crochet I went into the very first stitch. Okay. Now when you do in the rules of double crochet when you chain up three it is the first stitch. Okay so we're gonna chain up three. So one, two, three. This is your first stitch of the same one that's underneath and therefore your next stitch is right here. Okay. It's not right underneath it because then that means there will be two in there. Okay, so it's right in the next one. Yarn over, going in. So we go yarn over into the next stitch, pull through. So instead of pulling through all three like we did with half double crochet, we're gonna yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through the next two and you're done. See the difference of the gapping versus half double? That's why there's a difference of using it in clothing versus double crochet. So wrap into the next stitch. 
Okay, pull through, pull through two and two. Try again, so wrap, going into the next stitch, pull through, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. So wrap into the next stitch, pull through, pull through two and two. Wrap, next stitch, pull through, two and two. So I have a saying for this, I go wrap and through, pull through, then two and two. Wrap and through, pull through, two and two. So just continue to double crochet all the way across. Many people love to double crochet. It's the most popular stitch. It's quick, it's easy. It allows you to get scarves and etc. done. Um, so you see it kind of compacts together a little bit but you do have gaps that will appear in between and uh, for crochet that is normal. Uh, some people don't like that and that's why then they'll switch down to half double crochet as it's more tighter. So just half double crochet or sorry double crochet all the way to the end and then when you get to the end let's see where we're gonna finish. So we have two stitches left, one and two in order to finish. So you make sure you always get to the very end like so. Okay and it still should be flat straight up like so. So when we come back we're gonna do treble crochet next. So let's turn our work and do treble crochet. So treble crochet, most crocheters hate it and the reason for it, there's extra wrapping involved and but there is a purpose for it and it does look great for lacy kind of clothing etc. So you know there's some naysayers but the reality is it's it's a perfectly good stitch. So we've chained up three to do a double crochet. So treble is even taller than double crochet and this time we're gonna chain up four, one, two, three and four. So this now is the new height of the next stitch. The reason why the crocheters hate this stitch is that you have to wrap the hook twice. So I say wrap and wrap so you yarn over twice and then come into the next stitch. So you don't come into the same one that's underneath, you come into the very next one in, pull through two or sorry pull through, you have four loops on your hook, pull through two, pull through two, pull through two. So you have to pull through three times. So it's that wrapping of twice that gets on people's nerves. So wrap and wrap. So yarn over twice into the next stitch, pull through, four loops are on your hook, pull through two, two and two. So wrap and wrap into the next stitch, pull through, two, two and two. Wrap and wrap into the next stitch, pull through, pull through two, two and two. Wrap, next stitch. So let me speed up to regular speed and these, it doesn't take much. In actual fact you grow the project much faster when you used treble crochet. So can you wrap the hook even more to make it even taller? Absolutely for sure. Um, it gets a little bit more complex um, you know for time wise and etc. but the reality is that you can grow your project much taller. So most projects that you will see will either be single crochet, half double crochet, double and occasionally you will see treble. It depends on the project and there's a good reason for it as well. So I'm making my way all the way to the end. See I kinda like the motion of it. Okay, you make sure you go all the way to the end. Now when it comes to these ones here, this is your last stitch here. Okay, and you come into the top of the turning chain in order to do that. So it keeps that nice and flat going up on both sides. And so now you've just done single, half, you've done double and now you've done treble. So this concludes this lesson on how to do the basic stitches. There's lots of other tutorials available here on YouTube and basically you can uh, just start to play with these. Now in the rules of crochet what we've actually been creating here is that these are called referred to as a post. Okay each one of these are a post just like this. So you can do front post double crochet where you come around the post and then you use that. That's how you get ribbing effects. You can do back post where you come around the back and do that one and that gives you like almost like a sunken stitch which then leads into cables. You can also do front loops which is right in the front here. This will give you ribbings that you can see on top of hats. You can do the back 
um, loops just like so. Again that's more of a ribbing effect and you can also increase, decrease, you can do lots of great things and, but this is the basics on how to get started with crochet. Until so that's it. I hope you've enjoyed your tutorial today. Until next time I'm Mikey on behalf of the Crochet Crowd and Yarnspirations.com. Hey stay tuned to this channel. There's lots of free ideas, lots of free patterns and of course lots of free tutorials for you to play with. Until next time I'm Mikey on behalf of Yarnspirations as well as the Crochet Crowd.com.